pricing pages can make or break your SaaS product or your SaaS website. So we're going to look at some options that are doing it really, really well and a couple of sites that aren't doing it so well. So we can learn from these, change our SaaS pricing pages a little bit more, tweak them to increase that conversion rate and obviously get more users on board. So let's start with a super quick understanding of just conversion rate optimization. Don't worry, if you already know what it is, you can skip ahead. But conversion rate optimization is a bit like this big brother approach of monitoring how users are using our website and tweaking it to increase the likelihood of doing the thing that we want. Now, obviously that is an ongoing continuous process, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at some best practice options that some SaaS companies are doing really well on their pricing pages and looking at ideas that we might be able to steal to then bring into our own pricing pages, which should increase conversion rate. So let's start with Notion, incredibly popular SaaS platform, and they have a great uh, pricing page, essentially, that we really need to take advantage of. So let's have a quick look through here. First off, really clean, black and white. You know, there's no clutter on this page. And actually, because we've got a lot of black and white, it allows us to draw attention to certain areas. So you'll see up here that they've got this kind of blue with AI being available. They've also got a, sorry, not blue, purple. And they've also got purple over here where you can tag on the prices are changed. I also think it's really nice. They've got credibility building right at the top with like Nike, Pixar, and Uber. Obviously, not all of us have these companies that we're working with, so we can't put those in. But having some credibility building right at the top of the page makes a lot of sense. So we really need to take advantage of that. If we then look at their overall pricing, it's really well thought through. We've got these different areas for free, the plus, the business, and the enterprise. I really like how that's done. And they're very clear even in this subtext here to be like exactly who it's for. Small groups of people, for companies, and overall enterprises. I also like this particular feature. So if I'm unsure what some of these mean, all I have to do is hover my mouse over the top and I get an indication of what those are. So that works. There's also some subtle kind of use of, this is the one that most people go with. There's a little tag to say it's most popular and the uh, call to action CTA is black as well. So just draws a little bit of attention. Now, if I'm not quite ready to buy for those reasons, I probably need to see a comparison between them a little bit more. So they have then included this really nice feature, which is further down the page. And this is a comparison table. I think there's some really good points to this comparison table and things that could probably be improved as well. So we've got these row lines that are being very clearly split so we can see the differences on them. I would say that the columns could be better split so it's a lot more obvious what's included in each individual one. I know that's not necessarily a problem near the top of the page, but as we get further down, it's a little bit harder to necessarily see what goes with what. So that could be tidied up. But overall, really clean, very clear what you get for your money. And as we go down, rather than forcing the user to scroll all the way to the top of the page again, we're giving them the option based on if you like what you see in the comparison options, just pick the option that you want for comparison straight from here. So I think that's a really, really good idea. We've also got credibility building with some additional kind of testimonials here with the names of the companies using it. So lots of good credibility. And as we get down to the bottom, they then have this uh, FAQ. FAQs are really useful because we can have loads of additional text in there. We can answer people's concerns or objections, and it can be fairly visual in its nature. I think what works really well on this is we're not taking up too much vertical space because we're allowing them to have their answers in or the questions that they might have and the user can then click that to read it. The other big benefit that Notion will be able to do here is they'll be able to track which ones are being clicked. So if they're finding one particular question is being asked more than anything else, they can create a more visual section higher up, up here, for example, that really answers that visually and it doesn't need to be kind of hidden away down at the bottom. So that's very much some really, really nice things that Motion are doing. Next, we've got Slack pricing page to look at. Again, incredibly well known, very successful, makes sense that we look at how the top companies are creating their SaaS pages. And the reason I also wanted to include the Slack one is there's a lot more kind of technical information that these guys are trying to get across here. And it's a very different kind of overall feel compared to even just looking at the Notion one. You know, we're not getting any credibility building at the top, which I think is a shame. And then we do have these options here of free, pro, business plus, and enterprise. Again, I think the overall language could be better considered here. I think that's something that Notion does particularly well. And obviously we do have these prices, but we're not also really drawing any major attention to a pro account, for example, compared to how Notion is doing it. You have these different options in here of being able to build out these other options. 
This this one in particular feels a little strange to me. That why have we dropped that in the middle here? Why is it not further down so that one workplace isn't all on its own? And then you do have all of these items that could be hovered over, but there's a lot to read here. I do wonder if some of that information could be cut down, like how important is that information at this precise moment? Could that just be covered in the grid further down the page? Now, I will say that Slack is doing something really, really nice and probably the best example I could find for the comparison table. There's two things here is they have these columns that are separating them out with a bit of color to make it very clear of what's included there. But as I hover my cursor over these bits, you'll see that the line is really clear. So it's dead easy for the user to see, okay, if I'm interested in custom templates, which version do I need to get? Especially if I don't have that, it's actually a little bit hard to read because they don't have those lines in there. I also appreciate because there's so many options on here, if they did have those lines in, it's going to feel super busy. So I think this from a UI perspective is really well thought through and just gives that indication to the user so they can flick through all of these individual elements. I think one area where they're probably missing is these get started at the bottom. They don't feel like strong call to actions anymore compared to the ones at the top. If I scroll back up, we have these get started big purple buttons. It seems a shame not to have those further down the page really to draw attention. And again, they are taking advantage of FAQs. So that's two of the companies now that we've looked at. They're really taking advantage of those, answering those potential questions and concerns they might have before a user gets signed up. They also have kind of, again, they put their proof right to the bottom, their social proofing. So you can see case studies and you can see logos. Personally, I'm not sure I want to get the user onto the pricing page and make them leave um, off to a case study. I would much prefer to keep them on the pricing page. You maybe just have the logos like they've done here, but you know, that's up for discussion and would need testing. But either way, Slack's doing a really good job with that page. Now, I want to be really honest here with the next couple of options. I've never actually used their software. I don't know how good it is. Please don't uh, judge me for choosing this. But what I've done is I've gone on to yesterday's Product Hunt. Uh, Product Hunt is a really good website to find upcoming SaaS products or new products that are out that you might want to test. And I basically, they've got this upvoting system here. So upvoting means that people have tried the software out, they like the look of it, and they want other people to know about it. But if you see here, obviously we get down to these lower numbers and you get companies like this Parallabs uh, who don't have many people who have used it or um, uh, Optify that also doesn't have a very, very particularly high number. So what I've done is I've gone to a couple of these different ones here and I've picked out two of their pricing pages to look for some ways that we can improve that with the idea almost being that if more people had seen the value in signing up in the first place, they would have tried the software, they would have hopefully liked the software and then signed up for it. So my uh, expectation is that the low price, uh, the low upvoting is, is because the, the website hasn't done a good enough job to sell the user. On it. So we're going to look at this parallel AI now. Now, as I mentioned, I've not seen, I've not used this software, but from a point of view of what we're looking at now, there's a couple of confusing elements that are going on here. So we've got the word free, individual, business, and then enterprise. But then we also have these headers that say for individuals and for business. I think that line there could probably just be removed. The fact that this line goes all the way across is slightly confusing as well. I think that could probably just be stripped out if somebody adding anything here. From a point of view of what is separating them out, I think that the overall, I guess the choice of the black is, is a slight issue, but overall it feels a little bit cluttered. There's a lot of text here. There's not a lot of visual components to kind of draw my attention. I would imagine that they would rather maybe highlight individual overall and highlight a user to that in a little bit more detail, a bit like they do at Notion. The other major thing I would say is a concern on this particular one is as I go up, the standard pricing options would normally be that the one on the left is cheapest and then they move to the most expensive on the right hand side. The slight confusion for me here is individual is $29 and business is $25. Now I appreciate this is per user, but at no point do we highlight the minimum number of users. So can I as a user sign up for one user on a business account or do I need multiple users? And I think that needs explaining or just covering other prices should be different. But a simple additional tick to say minimum of three users would have been an easy way around that. And unfortunately, if we leave little things open like that, it can put people off and they just don't sign up. It can be as simple as that. So really cleaning these up could really, really help as well. I think the get started buttons, the actual thing we want the user to, uh, to kind of click on needs to stand out a lot more. We need more contrast there to really say like, hey, this is the thing we want the user to interact with. I know there's a button here. I know it's fairly obvious, but this is something that we know from experience. As we go down here as well, I find this a little strange that free 
is very much segmented separately to the rest of them. Um, obviously, it doesn't include many things, but it seems to have by far the, the widest column, uh, presumably because of this section here that has been built with the basis of adding that with some padding in. But I feel like that probably could have gone over two lines or taken up less space or just reworking what this says, because at the moment we're really highlighting free and intentionally, I would imagine. And again, same sort of issue here that as we go down is we've got a slight bit of like I'm having to look back and forth over each one to see what it is. And um, so I think that could be better laid out in all honesty. We also have no FAQs. We've got no real credibility building, um, you know, whether that's just logos or testimonials or anything. We're very much just saying, here's our pricing. Do you want to sign up? And I feel like that's probably a trick that they are missing. The last one is for Optify, and they're not really doing a particularly bad job from a design point of view. From a UI point of view, it looks really nice, right? Um, the issues are more down to, I guess, the micro content, the amount of information I'm getting here. So this is an image Optifier here, like that's what it is. There's obviously a lot of these on the market, so you really need to separate yourself out about why yours is great. The confusion comes here that it says we've got a free version. Um, I'm aware that obviously this says 500 one time, um, but then it says access to four optimizations and then batch processing. All of them say that. Um, so I think if every single option has that, it probably doesn't need referencing. Um, it definitely doesn't need referencing as, a, as an initial highlight. When you've got so little space to play with, I feel like we should be doing more salesmanship on, on something else. Um, I don't see why a user would ever sign up for the 450 a month or any of these options until they've had free and that might not be an issue maybe the whole point of this is to flow someone in that everyone should sign up for free and then they go and then they go from there but if that is the case why even have these you know why over, you know why push all this information on here and if this is the clear one that you know if this is most popular i imagine this must be most popular because why would you not sign up for 500 for free to trial out rather than doing those other ones it also says in more features coming soon. So there's no real separation from what I can see other than additional per month, which again, isn't the end of the world, but I think it just needs highlighting a lot more. There's no comparison tables. We do have some credibility, but actually the credibility isn't based on, a, it's based on the card payments they'll take. I think that's a little bit sneaky, but they take all these individual pricing options, which I guess is fine, but um, you know, it would have been a shame to have not referenced that in a bit more detail. And obviously I can switch over to here as well you know, showing the overall different prices in a monthly fee as well. So just feels like a kind of a, a bit of a waste in all honesty. There's more that could be done here, especially when some of the other examples we looked at do a really good job of answering any overall concerns. I think the overall website does a fairly good job of explaining the difference on everything that goes into it. And then they kind of stop at this hurdle here. They fumble at this hurdle and it could be a little bit more improved. So yeah, I hope that's useful. So what have we learned from looking at these SaaS products? Um, I think the main things is that making it really clear what you get for your money is really key. There's credibility building that has to be taken into account and that can be done in a few different ways. I think making it really like the names of the individual products is a really nice way just to simplify it down, let the user know which option should be for them. If at any point in the page that user needs to do or wants to decide to buy, we need to make sure there's a very easy uh, CTA to get to. And I think we saw this really well on Notion where at the top of the comparison table, right at the top of the page, we had a button to click. And then after you'd read all of the comparison, we had another click as well. I would also say that FAQs are an absolute essential one because we don't really want them having to leave this page to go find that information somewhere else because we might lose them coming back. We need to treat them as if we get them to a pricing page, we're so close to getting them across the line. Let's just answer any concerns that they have there and then. And that should really do it. If you see any other pricing pages you want me to look at, if there's other individual pages for a SaaS product you want me to look at, please let me know. If you want to see my most recent video, you can see that just over here. And uh, any, any likes or comments would be hugely welcome. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.